But as I said, crime continues despite COVID. Um, and as a result, we regularly chat once a month with the AFP Commissioner, Rhys Kershaw, who joins me online again on this uh, Tuesday morning. Commissioner, good morning to you. Good morning, Ray. Uh, Operation Ironside. Six ninety-six search warrants executed, 290 offenders charged, 728 charges laid, 4,784 kilograms of drugs seized and, remarkably, $49 million in cash. And it's not over yet, I believe. That's right, Ray. We've still got a number of targets that we're working on right now, so there will be more arrests and we do have another operation planned, uh, which I spoke about at my National Press Club uh, speech. Mm. Now, I'm just looking at the stats here, uh, Commissioner. Um, you reveal some, or one, in fact, outlaw motorcycle gang was making $21 million a month from selling illicit... $21 million a month! Yeah, that's right, Ray. Unfortunately, as we know, that Australia is an attractive market for organised crime, given the profit, and that you can, you know, 50, 60 times uh, the amount of the kilos when you when you work out what a kilo of drugs is worth and you can sell it for 60 times greater in Australia, it makes it very attractive to these uh, syndicates. So one of the things here, uh, the stats show me one kilogram of methamphetamines is bought for 1800 bucks in Myanmar, sold wholesale, not retail in Australia, for between 63000 and 150 grand. Then one kilogram of cocaine, 2300 in Colombia, is sold domestically for between 220000 and 450000 in Australia. A lot of money. It is a lot of money, and that's why we've been able to seize a lot of that cash, and that's their lifeblood, and we will continue to disrupt and, and basically dismantle their business models because, as you know, Ray, they can't survive without making mm. profit, and also their communications and their logistics operations are the three areas we're going to continue to attack those syndicates. I was reading a story the other day, and, and this is a general question, uh, without specifically talking about matters that may be before the court, but it becomes, I get a bit, bit frustrating when you, you put these people before courts, they're convicted, and then you've got to have an arm wrestle to seize the proceeds of crime. And in this particular case, the one I, the, I read the other day was a house, and, and a number of houses, in fact, uh, owned by someone who was uh, locked up. Um, and then there are battles by family members to say, oh, no, it's not really his, it's ours. I mean, that's a complicated process, no doubt. It is, but the good thing is we've got pretty good powers and legislation there, and that's one of the reasons why we're constantly talking to government and getting that support, um, is, like, in the last two years, we're almost up to $430 million in assets, criminal assets, that we've been able to restrain. Um, and as you know, they fight tooth and nail when it comes to trying to not get that uh, forfeited. But we've been very successful with our court orders and getting that, those assets forfeited. So I'm pretty confident that the majority of these assets will go to the taxpayer, back into the taxpayer, and uh, that's a good thing for, for the Australian community. If, if this story that's published today in the Courier Mail, I know you've addressed it previously, it wasn't so ridiculous... Um, and scary at the same time, you, you just say, oh, well, this has got to be some sort of urban myth. Counter-terrorism police have fooled the plot by conspiracy theorists who overthrow the government by forming their own police force, organising hundreds of replica police badges and drawing up arrest warrants for government leaders. I mean, there are lunatics in the community, as we've seen through COVID, the conspiracy theorists are left, right and centre. Uh, but were you surprised by this story? I, I was, um, noting that, they're actually committing criminal, Commonwealth criminal offences. And I do want to thank, Ray, the Queensland Police, the WA Police, South Australia and Victoria, and through our joint counterterrorism team with ASIO and ourselves and the State Police, that they took this seriously. And we've discovered quite a few persons of interest that the investigation is continuing. It's quite concerning and disturbing to see that uh, people are willing to go this far. And I was very... Uh, concerned about the fact that we're trying to recruit people using uh, the AFP commissioner as the one to recruit, including those badges that we did discover, uh, 470 of them. So we took it seriously and they'll be facing court and uh, no doubt there'll be other additional uh, matters that we're going to be addressing with that particular group. Now, it says here the operation began two weeks ago after a video started circulating on social media falsely claiming you... Uh, the AFP Commission calling for people to join the AFP and overthrow the federal government. I mean, it's so fanciful, it's mind-boggling that people would be duped by it, but obviously some were. 
Yeah, some were. Uh, they took it as a as a thing to you know apply for the AFP, thinking they were. But when you mm. get told that it's uh, you know all your training is going to be done on Zoom, and that sections of the Act which are not actually real, uh, you start to do your your you know your due diligence. And uh, you know I do want to thank the community, and some contacted me direct on this. Ray, really appreciate that as well. Um, and to go through the proper channels, as in they were told to go to a different website, different number, um, you just got to come to the AFP's genuine website and our, know that that's where our numbers are and so on. So we've had to take it very seriously because, um, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, uh, quite, it's quite concerning, some of their uh, behaviour and actions. A Gold Coast-based Zoom meeting presented with a photograph of you calls on people to join the alternative AFP that will dissolve every political party. A former One Nation and Palmy United Party candidate is named here to run the country. Um, did that person know they were being used as you were being used in this video? I don't know. What I do know is we do have a number of persons of interest uh, who are part of that group. So mm. that team, that joint, joint counterterrorism team led out of Queensland will we'll continue on, Ray, sadly. And um, uh, no doubt, I think there may be further charges down the track to just uh, stop these kind of groups, which, which is, is, is concerning for us you know, online and, uh, and what's happening because of COVID, I think, Ray. You know, a lot of people are getting on the computer and saying stupid things all the time. <laughs> yeah, I can testify to that, having sit here in front of a computer screen most days and looking at some of the stuff that's posted. But, I mean, it, it just is bizarre. I mean, it's something like you'd expect from some third world country or even perhaps even the United States at a different uh, time that someone would be... Uh, of an opinion they could post something on social media, uh, say, we want you to be part of a newly formed AFP, overthrow the government, and this is what you've got to do. I mean, it, it, it's so incredulous, it's beyond belief. It, it is, Ray, and uh, that's where I've just had to sort of, you know, uh, well, one is I listen to some of that, and it is quite bizarre, but what's bizarre is people are actually believing some of that. So we've yeah. got to... It's really good that you're able to showcase all of this to all of the community and say, look... Um, you know, do not undertake those, uh, I guess, applications unless they're real and, uh, you know, check your facts and so on. So there's some prevention work that we'll be doing with all the community about what's legitimate and not. But um, they're, they're a bunch of idiots, to say the least. Yeah, that, that's uh, encapsulating exactly how we feel. Always good to catch up. We'll chat next month. I appreciate your time today. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ray. Rhys Kershaw, the AFP Commissioner. It's always fascinating when we catch up with the Commissioner about what is happening out there. And like I say, some of it is sort of Ripley's Believe It or Not sort of stuff, but it's factual. It's actually in the community. And I think he's right about the virus impacting on the thought process of many people. Some of the people have gone stark raving mad, obviously, thinking that they could dupe people into believing they were some sort of alternative AFP with a photo of the Commissioner on that website or on that Zoom site and then enlisting people into this alternate AFP and doing their training online. The place has gone mad.